we go. Amazing. Another smooth transition. I just keep waiting for the shoe to drop. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for turning out. Uh, I think I announced I announced yesterday uh, on Jeff's when I was guessing on Jeff's stream that I wasn't going to do this today. Um, my dog passed away on Monday. It's been a tough week, um, but I decided to spend uh, this day with uh, friends, uh, as I said to Ivan here a minute ago in the chat. And uh, Jeff's been great. Um, so here we are. So today, since we did Strats yesterday, and since I was so, if you weren't there, I will just um, I'll do the spoiler alert and told Jeff that I would be on the stream if he would let me say, you know, right after he says how much he loves strats, that I could say I never really got along with them. And the fact is, I've never, if you're a long time watcher of the channel, I'm gonna get this camera angle, you'll know that um, I'm actually, I actually had an R9 last year and I, I kind of couldn't get along with that. Um, it's maybe hard to get along with. I don't know, as guitars go. I, I don't think so. There wouldn't be so many guitars around here. I have my humbucking guitars here. Uh, Panda already put in the chat. He's like, he can't wait for the DGTs the um, uh, PRS is to come out and there is one, there is one right near uh, by. Uh, so mine is here and uh, I actually have it set up where I could make some noise. Although, as I always say, if you've got Jeff McElhaney in the house, why would, why would I pick up a guitar anyway? So uh, thanks. Thanks for the condolences guys. I really appreciate it. So um, before I start weeping like a little girl, let me, uh, let me do my business here. The five watt world live stream is always is brought to you with the support of ish guitars more on ish later in the stream. And as I've said a couple of times, and I probably, I think it's written into my text here. Um, those guys had a, a burst in, in the last year and I very consciously uh, didn't play it. And actually when I was at Carter vintage, they were, they were so generous. They wanted me to, you know, they were like offering all the, the bursts and all the, you know, 50, 52 tellies and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to touch those. Um, so as I said, you know, some of you might have joined yesterday and uh, we had a good time talking about strats. So it just seemed like the logical thing to do. Uh, less Pauls today. Uh, we also have a, uh, because I said I wasn't going to be doing this, um, my, uh, our good friend and uh, longtime moderator, Baby Ninja, um, took a gig. Somebody called him and said, hey, man, uh, my guitar dra player dropped out. Can you do the thing? And so he spent the last 24 hours learning the set list. And if you're Baby, you can do, or Jeff, you can do something like that. So he's off playing somewhere. In Europe today, I wish I could tell you where, but I, I don't. I hate to lose you from the stream. Uh, and so today, we have none other than Perry McManus, my script editor. And uh, just so you know, if you didn't know this already, whenever there's a band and somebody puts in the comments, "Oh my God, I can't believe that the darkness, uh, all them witches," I mean, all these bands, I can't believe Keith mentioned that band. Yeah, that's Perry. <laughs> that's the beauty of having a moderator uh, and, and script editor like Perry. Uh, I'm actually going to, while I'm here, I'm going to do Perry's Les Paul bio. So Perry is a strat guy. Perry would have, um, actually, matter of fact, he said that he watched part of the stream from yesterday. And then when Jeff and I started joking about Jeff shaving the fingerboard down on a Kinetto, it, um, I think, I think Perry had to get off the stream and take a break and he's going to come back, um, to that. So, uh, but Perry owns a Les Paul and he, he surprised me because we, we, periodically do the five watt world exercise of saying, what would you rebuy? If you lost everything in a fire, what would you rebuy? And Perry said he'd buy, he'd, he'd get a Strat and he'd probably replace his Les Paul. And that's because Perry's Les Paul is a 15, uh, 19, 2000, oh, number 15, Greg Martin, AK the Hank Plank. He's got Wiz A4 pickups and it's an RS wiring harness. And he got it from Dave's guitar shop in 2015. And it was from the second run of those guitars. It has a late 58 spec, so the neck is smaller and it has slightly larger frets. Um, if uh, all of you folks are in the know, you would know that's a very special Les Paul. And though it weighs a ton, as I understand from Perry, um, it, there's nothing that sounds like it, which is a perfect segue to saying we should bring Mr. Macrolane on. We're gonna do we're gonna do Jeff's life story in. Oh, there he is. There I am. There we go. Here we got the big ink, the big shot. Yeah, the big shot. Well, you know, you got a guitar in your lap. So there. How's that? No, oh, okay. whatever you want to do. Well, when we, when you go, when you go to the guitar, when you okay. actually, yeah, I'll, I'll give you your spotlight or as you did to me yesterday, I don't think I can do that. Jeff put me down in the little corner when I, when, when I miss, uh, nobody puts baby in the corner when, when I miss bait, he put me down in the corner and, and I think he put a filter on my voice. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it was, it was, you know, it was a thing I do voices anyway. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to, I want to kind of roll through this. I've got stuff in the chat. If you want, um, questions, if you have specific questions, put the at five watt world thing up there. Uh, behave yourselves or, um, or, or Perry will spank you and uh, delete your comments. No, he's a nice guy. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't need to do that. 
Um, so we're going to do these in the order that Jeff had them. And I asked Jeff for some pictures of him with uh, Les Paul. So this this photo that I'm going to put up now with much trepidation on my guest. Guest. <laughs> it's from what year? About 97 or 8. Okay. Hey, that bass player right there is a bass player in a Scorpions, my friend Pavel. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what were you, what, I, we, it's a Les Paul, well, what was it? It, it's, it was in uh, 90, late 90s, whatever it was, historic, you know, uh, what they were called, you know, they called them historics back then. So it was an R8 and it was uh, red. Uh, red. It was like, yeah, it was red. It was like this weird color. They didn't make a lot of them. It was just this kind of like wine red. Okay. And um, it was a great guitar. I just couldn't figure it out, you know, and um, I ended up selling it to a student uh, when I started getting into Les Paul. Like it was... We could talk about the whole Les Paul journey, but it was kind of a rock band, and the Les Paul was really good for that gig. But I never, I never really understood Les Pauls until I guess the past number of years, if that makes any sense. Like yeah. really got into them. Uh, so we just got a message from Disco saying that we have an echo. It says Keith, there's an echo. Is it just is it the echo? Everybody can help me out with the uh, sound. Is there? We don't have any. When Jeff and I were testing, we didn't have any echo. Um, is the echo on both our our voices, on Jeff's voice, my voice? I figured this is going to happen. Yeah. we Because we're set up to play, it probably is. Oh, right. Ivan says no no echo. Okay. Well, well I can put on the echo cancellation. If I put on the echo cancellation on my end, the audio is not going to be as good for the guitar. Jason, I'm getting a lot of no echoes. Okay. Okay. Sounds fine. Thanks, guys. I'm, I'm going to turn my volume down really low here, too. No, no I think you're okay. All right. oh, Phil, Phil says it's just me. Well, well that's always it could the be answer. echoing in my end or Jordy says end. here's it on me. Okay, that could be coming back. Let me, let me try mic. one thing, guys, and see what I know. It's open mic for sure. It's totally what it is. Let's try this one thing. It's live. How about now? How about now? Is it gone? Everybody. All right. Just a bit of echo on Keith. Um, well, no echo now. Speak. All right, we'll see. Two. All right. I, you know what? I can change my mic placement. That might help. Let me pull this. Okay, I put the echo cancellation on mine. Um, but when we play guitar, it's going to sound a bit underwater. Cause well, it, I think you're okay. Okay. Well, I, I turned off the echo. I turned on the echo cancellation. So All this right. people know what we're talking about. Um, when you put an echo cancellation, because we have some live speakers and there's all sorts of weird audio routing with these kind of things that sometimes happens. And if I put on echo cancellation, it'll cancel the echo, but it reduces the quality of the guitar sound when we go direct. Yeah, so. John, John um, JL Trend John says that he thinks it might actually just be reverb here uh, bouncing. I actually moved the mic placement so you might be getting less off the, yeah, it's okay. gone. It says it was gone before Keith moved the mic. Yeah, well, okay, you know, this is, we don't wanna, we don't wanna spend an hour on this, but okay. 409, I think we're good. So that was a red R8, it must have been, uh, you said early 90s? Uh, or 90 something. I don't remember exactly. 97, 90, you know, it was pretty, yeah. pretty, it was a cool guitar. It was a great guitar, great sounding guitar. Um, but I was, you know, playing strats a lot at that point and it was just, just sort of dove into the Les Paul thing. And I just didn't understand Les Pauls at all after playing strats or, you know, I played strats with humbuckers in it, but it was still a different thing. Like I just couldn't get with it. And they were so weird with the tone knobs. And at that point, I think I was such a Jeff Beck head, even though he played Les Paul, but you know, um, I just, uh, I ended up, I did get other ones across the time, which we'll talk about, but I, I still didn't really get into them until I started working really, really, really started work getting into, heavily into Eric Clapton a little later in my life, but working with Robin was when I really, really committed to them. And I think it opened up the whole thing of what a, a good Les Paul is supposed to be. And that was a big part of it. Understanding there's kind of different kinds of Les Pauls, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. what I mean by that is like, if you're playing in a hard rock band, you know, into a JCM 800 or something like that, that's going to be a different kind of pickup configuration than I might be going for now or, you know. Right. Pick um, so the, the next Les Paul I have of you is a gold top that you owned. Mm -hmm. when? Yeah. That was, um, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago. I used that on the record with Robin and I. Or, or me, Robin and me, whatever. <laughs> and um, that it was a, it's a 57 reissue, like a another custom shop, dark back, cool guitar, really good sounding guitar. And that space there was at National Sawdust. That's a place here in Brooklyn I was curating. I did a, a, a American music 
Roots Festival. I brought in David Grissom and, and Robin Ford and uh, wow. Sidel Davis was a blues musician. I brought my friend uh, Michael Rouse is a modern American composer. You can see some of that stuff online on, on YouTube. And that was a really cool guitar, but then that I, I let that go for other things, you know. Right. Um, all right. So then, uh, so what, what came after that? Okay. Uh, after that came, I got a, a really good deal on a R8. No, an R9. No, an R, R, R9, I think. But it was a bit, a bit clown bursty for me. Clown good burst. guitar. So when you say clown burst, did you mean like tomato can 60s burst? Well, it was supposed to be a 59, but it was very red around the edges. And, ah, okay. And it looked a bit like the clown bursting, which I don't, don't necessarily love. So what happened with that, I ended up, when I was recording the, the Now record with Robin, which is available at the, Go. my, my Go. website, uh -huh. and also available in Bandcamp, um, Robin had a a 58 reissue had the neck brought down a little bit that you can see in a lot of videos from him from a number of years ago. If you see him playing a sunburst, Les Paul, uh, that's that guitar. And he so, was, so if I can just jump in, it's the, you want to hear a lot of it. And actually it's pretty, he talks a lot about it. It's the guitar that he plays in the Anderton's interview. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. There's an inter interview with Anderton's where they compare the guitars and that's that guitar. Right. So, um, I like that guitar. So I, he sold that one to me, and one of my students really liked that particular Les Paul. So I had him pay Robin directly, and I just took Robin's guitar. When I got home, I just gave him that guitar. So it was like this in and out, and Robin's like, great, perfect, perfect. And then um, then I ended up so then I ended up with this one a little further down the line. And this is a historic makeover. And this is a R8, no, R9. But what historic makeover does, and this is before the Murphy Lab started doing what they're doing now, it's um the Brazilian board, they put a Brazilian board on it. They completely stripped the guitar down to, to nothing and they refinish it with actual nitro and the, the real dye that they use, like, like aniline, is that an aniline, aniline or whatever? Uh, yeah, and, the, the red, right. Yeah. And then, um, you know, they refret it. So basically rebuild it all the way. Um, this one didn't I, need. A, I did not know they redid the fretboard. Oh yeah. This is a, yeah. They, this had a, an Indian rosewood, which is a bit red. And then yeah. they put in, you know, here and then, um, these are throwback SLE 101s. So this is a historic makeover, and this has kind of got like the perfect neck for me. It's a 59. The new, the new Murphy Lab neck is perfect, like a great. They did a great job with the neck, especially the 59. So it feels a lot like this. And this is a little aged. You know, it came that way. They kind of lightly beat it up, but um, not too much, so it doesn't look ridiculous. And yeah. you know, the finish cracks, and it, so it's a real. It's going to continue to to crack. The interesting thing is like the Murphy labs are much more cracked than this. And this is actually, you know, um, what they do is they finish it and then they basically, I think they put it in freezers and they take it out of the freezer and then they put it back, you know, that whole thing. Right. Right. Yeah. So what year did you get this guitar? I probably got this about five years ago. Okay. I had done some, um, some work for somebody and it was part of a, a barter thing. Nice. So nice. yeah, cause they're, they're pretty pricey, but there was, you know, we just worked something out that was really cool, you know. And the and throwbacks I, are your, those SLO 101s are your favorite pickup. So far, yeah. You know, I mean, there's lots of great pickups and um, throwbacks are, are pricey, but they're, they're the closest I've come. I've had the real great pleasure of working with someone um, who owns, I think at this point, like eight or nine bursts. And I helped choose them. I think we talked about this, but I'll tell the story again. There was working with this person and he was... Um, he was, I had five bursts in the room and he said, Oh, help me choose two. And I'm like, well, you know, so yeah, sitting around with five bursts and then my job was to choose two of them, you know? And so, um, I helped, uh, facilitate and check out lots of guitars for this guy. And, um, obviously he's in a different tax bracket than everybody. And, um, so it was really super educational, especially to find out that not all old guitars are good, you know? There's a lot more duds maybe than there are, you know, but the ones that are really great are really great. Mm -hmm. So I had a, at that point, I started to figure out, oh, this is what an old Les Paul sounds like. This is the thing. And the, the big cliche, and I find it to totally be true, is it's kind of like a big telly. And that's, I find it to be true. And the Les Pauls I had or the sound in my head was always like John Sykes from Whitesnake, who I love, you know, but that ah. thicker, like kind of distorted, full on, you know, like more of a metal 
probably hot pickups, hotter pickups, or maybe not, but more gain, you know, and like when you go to the neck, it was very like sweet child of mine kind of thing, you know, and, and uh, even though slash plays, but these are all things I didn't know at the time, you know, fifties yeah. wiring, huge thing for me when you started playing Les Pauls in terms of the sonic qualities of what I like from a Les Paul. So, um, so I went through a bunch as you can tell, but uh, the cool thing is we, we talked a little bit about yesterday. What's nice is, you know, you, you get one and if you buy something like a custom shop or if you buy a Gibson or something and you want to sell it, you, you often don't get beaten up too much. And everything I have is pretty much used right? because then I'm buying it at, at the lesser price and then you can turn around and upgrade or sell this for that. And that's how these things happen. You, you kind of start scaling up because you, you trade over and all that. Right. Because you can. Because you can, yeah. Right. And that's the fun of it. Right. And then you start going through and you start to find out when you start playing really great ones and you're like, oh, that's what I would look for. So this to me is a really great one. Yeah. Really, this is a keeper. Like I'm completely, I, I haven't found anything that sounds any better other than maybe the real deal, you know, in yeah. my mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. So let me, since you did the segue with the cliche, the the tele on steroids thing, mm -hmm. that's kind of how I've approached. And as I said, uh, before I brought you on, I had an R9 last year. It was an amazing guitar um, mm -hmm. uh, that I got from um, Guitar Loft in New Hampshire. Great guy, worked with me, found me a Les Paul that still sounded like a Les Paul was just under eight pounds. Wow. And it was like a heavy Strat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just couldn't get it. I couldn't deal with the ergonomics. People mm -hmm. that know, you know, follow the channel know that I've been playing Strandbergs. And when I first started playing Strandbergs, I wanted to put together a humbucking Strandberger Strandberger, right? Strandberg. So I reached out to Lindy Fralin and I said to Lindy, you know, I'm going to do this Strandberg project. I always liked deluxes. So I like little pickups. This was already set up as a telly. So I said, you know, could you wind me a set that would match? And my idea, I said, you know, if, if a Les Paul is a telly on steroids, like let's take a T-shaped object ish mm -hmm. and push it that direction. And so yeah. As we just implied, if you have a hotter wound pickup, it often has a slightly darker sound. So even though this is a narrower field and you can't make it sound like a wider pickup mm -hmm. than it is, uh, it's a little darker. And, uh, and then of course this, um, uh, the neck, since it's only two knobs, I took what Jeff does so well. If you haven't watched Jeff's, um, video on, uh, dialing a Les Paul, uh, amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. And I've learned so much and I actually have modified guitars. So this guitar is set up um, with like a lot of tellies with the neck pickup, no tone control on it at all. Mm -hmm. And then I can control the tone for the bridge here. And then I've got a master volume. Right. So, you know, I've dialed the amp for this as Jeff outlines. Again, everybody should go watch that. It's I, I will rewatch it periodically. Thank you. Uh, so this for a long time was my, my Les Paul, my, you know, humbucking guitar. It also, as you can see, is semi hollow. It doesn't really sound that airy, um, but um, it, it also weighs, you know, like five and a half pounds because it's a Strandberg headless guitar, et cetera. So, um, so that's this. Um, and then the thing I had David Grissom on a little while ago, and people have seen this guitar in my Instagram feed. This is a Wood Library DGT um, in um, custom uh, platinum top. I always love gold tops, and uh, a platinum top just seemed amazing. It's, yeah, a, it's got a uh, somewhat flamed. I think it's a little bit of flame in the neck. I got one of them. <laughs> exactly. And it, actually, it's a really beautiful piece of mahogany as well. Yeah. So if you're if you're talking about a humbucking guitar, a Les Paul that has enough snap to, for it to be compared to a Telecaster, a 25 inch scale, you know, guitar that was <laughs> designed so you could split this to sound even more like a Tele, et cetera. For me, and I've said this yesterday on the stream, I've never been a big fan of this um, look of the yep. shape of the instrument, but when it's on my lap, it disappears. So yeah, they're very they're well. Very yeah, ergonomic. Yeah, right. It took it took a while to commit to playing a Les Paul, and I think the story, like I started saying, was I was working with Robin Ford. We're doing a record together. We'd done yeah. some playing, and we'd done a lot of workshops and some jamming and all this kind of stuff at these workshops. And I primarily a strat guy and he's like listen man I, you know you play great you know but the second you go to that neck pickup on a strat you you're just falling into the hendrix category and it drives me crazy and i thought it was really nice because he was like um you know he's he meant it in the best way it's like i think you know you, you're just falling into something and when you don't play on those things you don't sound that way you sound more like you so basically for the record we did together and the tour the consecutive tour they took me out two of them 
Um, he's like, okay, no straps. Like you're not allowed to play a strap. And I was like, okay. Well, plus, you know, that's his, right. it's his gig. So what it's am I? It's his gig, right. Yeah. yeah. So if he says yeah. no straps, then there's no straps, you know? Right. Well, well at the end of the second. What, what, what he wants to hear behind himself solo, right. right? So. But it's funny at the end of the second tour, we were in New York and I ran home and, and, uh, Rick, the sound guy, Rick Reeler, who's Robin's tech and Larry Carlton's tech was like, yeah. go get your strap. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran home and got my strat. And then, then Robin's like, all right. Sound, sound killer, man. That's okay. All right. You know what I mean? He was really funny. Like he was totally cool on it when I was that. So I felt more comfortable, but, um, what it really brought to, I did learn how to use Les Paul and I really loved them. And I talked about, you know, yesterday we talked about strats. Strats are my kind of, you know, desert Island with electric power and an amplifier. If you had a desert Island with, <laughs> with yeah. like an amplifier, really, really comfortable desert Island. Yeah. Um, but I, I do love Les Pauls. I absolutely love Gibsons. Um, I could have a 335 and at some point I did have an SG. I, I do at some point want an SG, but um, there are all sorts of things that in terms of, for me, we talked about yesterday, but just today that if I'm just going to go on a gig, I find strats ergonomically are the best. I find um, they, they travel better than a Gibson does if you're you know flying and there's, yeah. there's, there's the practical pragmatic end. And also just two humbuckers sometimes for me, can be uh, if it's like a funky gig. Some people can get away with that. For me, I don't. I like to have the option of a strat. So it's a thinner tone, and I just feel I can cover more ground. But anyway, well, so and one of the one of the things I have to say because mm -hmm. it's one of the reasons that we're doing this that I asked you to do this because you said you were willing to help out today. But the the reality is, you and I have been working together on videos about three and a half years. Wow. I mean, yeah. I didn't go dig it up, but. But the reason I'm saying this is it was at a time when you were playing a lot of Les Paul. Yeah. So um, it was funny because we would, you know, get on or I was watching you do. I, I, I mean, I've said this before. I was doing Jeff's courses long before I actually got to talk to him. I was a little starstruck the first time I talked to Jeff because I'd been doing these courses for 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, through right. True Fire and, you know, in Robin's courses when he when you, you yeah. know, made that connection for them. And but you were playing a lot of Les Paul then. And so yeah. the funny thing is, in my mind, you're kind of a Les Paul guy because yeah, sure. that's, that's, yeah, that's how you kind of dropped into my yeah. life. So, um, we'll come back but, to your Les Pauls, but oh, go yeah. ahead. I, I play this all the time. Like I love yeah. this guitar. Yeah. I mean, it's not like when I would talk about strats, I'm talking about if there's gotta be one guitar, it's gotta be a strat, but I would very quickly miss having a Les Paul for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank all Grendel's, uh, right there with his dependable, uh, top chat. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, our, our own resident monster, the Grendel. Everybody should go look that up again. Uh, so then I recently, uh, I've been into this one pickup guitar thing this year, and I recently got this Strandberg, which is a Paul Masvidal. I think people are surprised to learn that I have this prog, prog metal kind of background. I grew up listening to Genesis and all kinds of prog music. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was making noise about changing this pickup up to something more traditional because I have this idea for a video about... Um, bar rig of the future and uh, which somebody asked me if that meant you could uh, spill a beer on a, on a catalyst amp. I, I, you know, I don't think that's, what I, that's not what I was thinking. Um, but this guitar has been so much fun for me to play this week. Um, yeah. I've only had it the week. It's an incredible guitar. Um, beautiful. It's this is a crop circle thing from England um, mm -hmm. that I guess is a Masvidal tattoo thing. Um, it's a burl top. I mean, it's just, and you can see here, I'm like whipping it around with one hand. It weighs, I haven't weighed this one yet, which is very unlike me. I, David, when David Grissom was on, we were laughing because we both, well, we all have postal scales. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, we, we know on the back of the guitar, there's a blue tape with the exact weight and ounces. But, um, so this is, yeah. I, I know all the, the weights. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. So this is the current, the current humbucking guitar. So no. yeah. This so, one is eight pounds, three ounces. Not that you know, eight pounds, three. Yeah. 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 That's nice. Yeah, it's, it's, really it's great. Weight. Yeah, that's you could stand up and play that. Yeah, and yeah, carry it around. Yeah, but when you put it in a Kelton case, it's like suddenly pounds like twenty pounds eight ounces. You know, <laughs> right? We should weigh it in the Kelton case. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Phil Jones said the inlays. Yeah, that the inlays are very cool. The guitar is an, is is really cool, and I, like I said, the tone circuit. And I'll 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 talk about. It. I'll do a Strandberg stream where I'm going to have Ola on. Um, that guitar actually has a parametric. Uh, preamp where it's a parametric EQ where you can sweep the EQ and then boost or cut for the frequency that you're sitting on. So I immediately thought, well, I'm going to change it out to a more traditional pickup. And then I sat down and I rolled something up and all of a sudden I'm playing like, you know, Pat Metheny travels. Mm -hmm. trying to. And yeah, I'm yeah. like, this sounds great. I'm like this, yeah. this, I mean, it just, you, it, it's giving you the ability to carve the thing. So um, anyway, 
Uh, so, okay. So we got, we're up to this one. Mm -hmm. uh, let me, let me go ahead. Since we're kind of at a spot, we're going to talk about your gold top next. Yes. Which gold yeah. top? Uh, I guess the, which the, one comes next in, in purchasing. Yeah. Or in, in, in acquiring is the, uh, the 53. Oh, and somebody asked what year this was. I, I'm not sure. Um, it's a different serial number. Cause they, they took it. This is like a 2019. So okay. it's not old. It's just the, it was a historic. It wasn't a Murphy, whatever. It was custom shop, you know, like, you know, and then, um, then you send it to them and I got lucky because it was, I hadn't played the guitar ahead of time. It was, you know, like they, we worked out this thing and I played the guitar once I got it and decided, but there was not a, uh, you could send a guitar out and it could come out and you still don't like it. But this one, I got a chance to play it. It was right. good, but this is like a 2000, originally 2019, I believe. Okay. Or people, people are telling me that I'm quiet and others are loud. Anyway, let me do my stream spot here. A five word Royal live stream is brought to you with the support of Ish Guitars. Uh, people have heard me say this before. I moved to Syracuse to be near my family, but also to work with the guys at Ish. Uh, it's really been a lot of fun. Uh, Ish stocks a carefully curated set of brands, including, and I, and I wrote this list, it's, I love it. PRS, Dingwall, Martin, Specter, Strandberg, Music Man, Gretsch, Federa, Heritage, Ritter, Ibanez, Taylor, Vox, and Victory, to name a few of my favorites. Um, they actually also carry line six stuff and can do that for you. That's something I do all the time. Since opening in 2014, Ish has grown to be one of the top PRS private stock and wood library dealers in the world. They also deal in vintage pieces. And as I mentioned at the top of the stream, they had a burst, a 1960 burst that was pretty, pretty tomato can, I have to say. So it was a later 1960 burst. Right. Um, and when they sold that guitar, this just people have a sense since, uh, since Jeff got to dip a toe into that water, when they sold that guitar, they put one of their salesmen on a plane, uh, in first class with another seat being purchased for the guitar <laughs> and they flew it to Denver, Colorado. And then the salesman came back. Yeah. Um, so they also have, actually, they still have a 1956 Strat in stock. Mm -hmm. It's in really good shape. Uh, and I haven't played either of those guitars. Uh, the shops excels in working with manufacturers. They do limited runs of instruments with cool features and woods and colors. Um, the owner was just asking me the other day why there's no such thing as a Keith Williams signature Strandberg. Single, you know single what I'm saying? Pickup, you know what style, I'm saying? some you know unusual color, you know, blue and you know white, denim. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they, they highlight the fact that every instrument is unique and that unique instruments are worth pursuing. Mostly the shop is importantly to the shops run by and for musicians. Anyone that answered the phone there is gonna be a bass player or both, guitarist or both. It's not an exaggeration, as I said, to say I moved here to work with those guys. I'd like to thank the guys at Ish for their support of this live stream. Okay, so what, time to pick up a gold top. Someone's saying, what pickups? These are there you go. throwback SLE 101s. I don't know if you can hear, like it might be a little woggly because of the, uh, you know. The <laughs> I go the neck. So you see what I mean? It, it doesn't is not super thick and wooly. And someone posts like, like, you know, tell these sound nothing like Les Pauls. Yeah, of course, but there's, we're talking about like a clarity to the notes, um, sort of a, it, my favorite Les Pauls are not super, super beefy sounding, like they're yeah. more, a little more articulate, you know, so like for me, Peter Green, I got that middle thing on the Peter Green thing here. So these are out of phase with each other, the big Peter Green fan. And I can also, the cool thing is you can kind of dial that volume back a bit. Take a little bit out of t out of phase. Right? Your one hundred ones. We ordered them with the Peter Green. Yeah, I did. Just because I was, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I torn because I'm such a big Jimmy Page fan. I was torn between whatever pickup modification I want, but I just wanted that sound. Yeah. Yeah, that's killer. Okay. Yeah, that guitar sounds amazing. It's a great guitar. Yeah, this is like the, you know, they're all at this point they're. As we're saying, you, know, you go through a bunch and I just always knew what I wanted. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Like, you know, all right. Somebody so, asked if that was a burst. Um, not a real one, no. Yeah. The term burst is applied to the original vintage guitars from 58 to 1960. Yeah. So uh, there, I actually did a video on bursts and specifically on burst history. So I would encourage you to go look at that. Yeah. If you want to learn more than anyone, than any human should know about bursts, you'll, you'll know it in about 25 minutes. 
Okay, I just asked you these questions. Those are you know, throwback SLE 101s. They are not potted. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so this, of course, is you know the real. This is the real deal. Um, this is now we are in the fifties. Yeah, this is in 1953. Um, so 90s. The, but this is. I'm going to bring up this picture of you and Robin. Mm -hmm. You guys did a video. Yeah. About um, early gold tops, and Robin is not holding the guitar that you're holding. No. Um, but a very similar one. The one he's holding has an original bridge. Yeah, and and no poker chip. And no poker chip, which is the circle around the, yeah, the, um, the, the pickup the selector. selector. Yeah. And, and, and that, that one, earlier ones don't. I think it started in 53, they put the poker chip. I could be wrong. I don't okay. know. Okay. Well, let's, um, let's we get you back. Yeah. So this one, this was Robin's. You can see Robin playing it in a number of videos. And, um, you know, he's a, one of my best friends. He's the greatest yeah. guy. And he had this and he was trying to get some other vintage stuff. And he was getting away from P90s. And every time I was at his house, I'd be playing this guitar. And I'm just like, oh, it's just a man. God, this guitar is so good. So um, he um, bought some other stuff and he's like, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the P90 guitar. You want, I think you should buy it. And I'm like, well, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think I should. I've got a bridge you, I could trade you for it here in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Um, but we, we worked it out um, and I got some help, you know, pulled out every stop. You know, it's part owned by another family member kind of stuff. You know, like it was really one of those things that I wanted to do everything I could to get it because it is a magical guitar. And also like, I'm a, you know, Robin is, a, you know, he's one of my best friends, but also uh, a hero. And, you know, it's, there's a lot of value to it for me above the fact that it is a, a, a good guitar to own. And, and uh, it's just magical. A few, my friend came over a few weeks ago and he was like, this is maybe the, one of the finest guitars I've ever heard. And I'm like, yeah. Well, I, wow. Yeah. yeah. Jason Lachlan, the good friend, he's like, man, that guitar. I'm like, I know. So, um, uh, so you might hear so some of the. This is not the original bridge. You have a compensated bridge of some kind. Yeah, right? this is the Joe Glazer bridge because the original bridges are are unplayable because right. they kind of float up and there's these big pieces. Like, they're, it's just they're disasters, yeah. and that's why they changed them. So Joe Glazer does this thing. So it's the trapeze, and um, you know, it sits very flush to the body, so the action's pretty low, um, and. This thing, um, it, it, some people are like, why don't you put a, a stop tail? Because the neck angle isn't, isn't, you can't do it on this guitar. Because that's what they changed at about 54 or something. They changed the neck angle. They put the ABR bridge or the top tail piece. So this, the, the neck angle is too shallow. So it's actually at like a perfect action right now. If, if it were a little bit different, then it would, we would be running into problems where you might have to do a reset on the neck. Um, and some people are like, why don't you put humbuckers in there? And my good friend Holger Notzel is a great vintage guitar guy. I'm like, I'm thinking about it. He's like, yeah, man, I'll just kill you if you do that. <laughs> like, he's like, you never do that. He's like, P90s is the best. He's like, you never do that unless like there's a headstock break or like, you know what I mean? Like, right. the, he's like, but don't. That guitar is what it is. And then when you start living with it, you're like, yeah, it's pretty magical. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you might hear some noise going on because these are the original pots and they're, unfortunately, they're, they're on the their last. original pots. Yeah. Yeah. They're on the last legs though. Yeah, like I'm, okay. I'm seeing what I can do. Maybe you can get them rebuilt. But... It's live. Yeah. Right. So I'm playing blues like then the bridge. Did you roll back that tone a bit? Yeah, it's a real, it's a great guitar. Um, beautiful neck on it. Uh, so it is the, you know, the, this and the, the, the old Strat or the, the things. They're the ones, um, you know, and you can't, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, right. It's just. Like porn, <laughs> guitar porn. Well, that's, that's what we, you know, Rick Beato always says that I'm the uh, most gear oriented, non gear channel. Oh, ever. totally. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's who five watt world is. I'm here to teach you about gear and, and we can all learn about gear. And you know, if you get some good, yeah. if, you, if you learn enough to realize what you do and don't need that, then that's all good too.
So, so is that what amp I'm playing through? It's right. a fractal. It's a lot. It's a, uh, it's a fractal. It's not a real amp. It is my Actually, fractal uh, FM3. Somebody was saying that, the, that you have the best tone since the sixties. And I knew that you're in your fractal today. I, I, honestly, uh, boy, folks, um, when Jeff's in the fractal, as opposed to running in the, in the big amps behind him, it's pretty hard to tell on, on this kind of compression algorithm and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, through the two rocks, there is, there's a little something more mojo going on, but I mean, for the convenience and the, and the compression, like you said, and sometimes um, with the, like, there's just this, for, especially for broadcasting and recording, it is so easy yeah. to use the fractal. I know that sounds great. Yeah. I mean, right. It does. Sounds know. great. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Fuldark wants to say thank you for both, thank you to us both for knowledge, lessons, and wisdom. And then Uncle Left Eye has started a pot rebuild fund with a, with a, well, oh. a, cool, with a cool 20 to get going, get that going. Thanks. So uh, you, you sent it down to me and I'll forward all this to Brooklyn. How's that? Okay. How does a trapeze affect the tone bridge compared to the wraparound bridge? I don't really know because I've never played this one with anything else. I just know the way the guitar exists on its own. Right. Um, it takes a minute to get used to the feel of this, like a minute, hmm. you know, like, and then you get used to it because it, it does sit a little differently, but it's not crazy. You know, if you, you, you play it for a little bit, you're like, oh, okay, I got it. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I asked Jeff to have it nearby, and I don't know what comes next. Um, the gold top. <laughs> The gold top comes next, but the, when, when I wanted to put up this picture, um, cause there's often comes up in a conversation about, uh, Les Paul. So if you're a telly guy, you're a strat guy and you think you need to have a guitar with humbuckers, one mm -hmm. of the things that comes up is this. Yeah. Get a 335, you know, mm -hmm. it's way more flexible and all these kinds of things. And there's people, as I said, that to me, it's funny, I'm not a very big person, but a, a Les Paul both feels heavy and small. Um, yeah. Whereas a full size 335 feels too big. What this picture is is a picture of Jeff playing a Collings L35 that um, he I, had. I35, yeah. I35, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, interstate, like the no, yeah, no, it's play. Yeah. Anyway, right. So, uh, um, and this guitar, you really like this guitar, the size and playability, and everything. Um, but but a 64 Strat uh, made this one go away, as my memory, right? Yeah, that was a Collings I35. This is great guitar. Really, just right. a, a great instrument. Um, but you know, to get this and to get my old strat, I really liquidated everything. Right. And I, I don't regret it. Cause you know, over time you start to build things back up and relationships and stores and all these kind of things like that. But yeah, I had to get rid of, uh, it Stop. was painful. It was painful. Like, Cause I love that guitar. It was great. But, um, you know, oh, and we'll, I think we'll have time. It's four forty, So let's do the, let's do the gold top. And then yeah. we, we can do some, cause you got your, you got a Murphy three thirty five now. And so we can do some 335 versus gold top uh, bridge to noises. Um, so here's my Murphy dark back gold top. Um, uh, Rob, Rob Nowit, Namich, Namowich, sorry, Rob, uh, says is that the worst road is that in Michigan? No, that road is actually um, outside of Austin uh, where Collings is. <laughs> Steve Shock has a is a, a chat in there, and he's reminding me that he used that I used a picture of him with Jimmy Wallace's '59. I think in the burst videos, "All Hail Left Balls." Thanks. Steve. Hmm. Thanks yeah. So, so I got this one right. Uh, well, this one. Uh, I just, I'm just such a sucker for, for, um, for gold tops, you know, yeah. and, um, the, the Murphy's Rob and I had this discussion. You got a Murphy that he really loves. The, the Murphy's feel like an old guitar. That's the best thing. I mean, they sound great. I mean, but when you pick it up, this feels not that dissimilar to my old guitar, hmm. you know, like in the neck wise. So yeah, I mean, it, it's an embarrassment of less, but embarrassment of less Paul's, but, um, this one I put high. These are these are actually the throwback Peter Greens, which are a little higher output. And this guitar was um, there's certain I had some work. And also, what I do is I just end up selling a bunch of other things, like other guitars I wasn't using. And I really try to I'm paring things down and just getting the best. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you yeah. sell three guitars to get one, and then. And then that money is not like, you know, nothing's coming. You try not anything out of the bank. Like you're just trying to keep gear for gear because everybody knows if you sell a guitar, 
and it, that money sits around it, it you know like then bills come in or right. you know look if you got to pay for sounds for things you got to pay of course for stuff and that's and i've done that too on you know sadly my 64 deluxe reverb you know mm-hmm. when i got it for like 700 bucks right. years and years ago but rent came up and i didn't have it you know it, you know like you know it's funny there i was i was an economics major in college and they there's this thing where you kind of measure i can't remember if we've talked about this because i've been thinking about this a lot lately you kind of measure the world in something that has real value for you yeah. so i recently bought um a prs modern eagle and uh wood library from ish it's a six thousand dollar guitar in my mind that's a week in paris and i yeah. said that on a live stream once and i said you know that's a that's a week in paris for two that's lovely yeah and somebody put in the somebody put in the comments things hey, yeah i've been to paris keep the guitar <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I have a relationship to bread that you don't have, but oh, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. But I feel you. So anyway, that's, you a, know, I didn't just, they're, you know, yeah, business, expense, is, right. business expenses, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, well, and I was going to say, so actually you could think of this, I could turn that on its head and say, um, uh, you know, the fact is, you know, that's a, that's a custom shop plus Paul, it's like grand, it's a week, same thing yeah. as a week in Paris. So yeah, th- what year is this guitar? This is new. This is a, uh, 2000. 20, it's supposed to be 2020. I guess it's a new Murphy lab. But it's a new Murphy. Did you get this one from Watchtower? Um, No, I got it through the gear page. I took a risk. Yeah, but I figured like it was a, it was pretty, it was a very reasonable price for it, whatever that means. And the dark back I'm a sucker for. And, um, you know. uh, So so, uh, Bjorn already put in the stream that he thought, immediately he thought um, the, um, that this guitar didn't have the, character of the p90s he said nothing beats p90s how would you say this compares to your other to your your burst oh we, we can hear him um yeah, let's do that. this is definitely fatter this is more much higher output in a way like even okay. like peter greens from throwback are not this does not have the reverse wired this is right they're a little hotter um overall i mean i uh, you know the, every, the guitars are always on the chopping block like i love this guitar but if one's gonna go it's gonna be, probably be this one Okay. A little bit fatter neck, but sounds great. I, can, I have the burst buckers in the closet. I like them. Don't always love them. I think I, I, I don't like the way they balance. They sound great, but I, I find that uh, I set up for the bridge and I'm like tweaking the neck and then I'm going for the neck and tweak. Yeah, that's my personal experience, but they're really good. You know, do you find yourself using the middle position much where you're balancing the pickup? Yeah. Or yeah. You're balancing for switching yeah. between. Okay. So the, the Peter Green, as somebody pointed out, the Peter Green has a reverse magnet. Yeah, so that one have the magnet is flipped. It's not wiring. It's an actual magnet. It's not okay. it's not electronically done with a switch. It's actually the magnet's different. But here you get that real, you know, that whole, that great Jimmy Page stuff, you know, which I can't play any Zeppelin or else you get dinged immediately. But, you know, you can mix these a little bit, you know. You know. <laughs> yeah. Right. So... So it's much more the rock gig. So yeah, for, for rock gigs, you know, and for rock recordings, like this is if the thicker thing, and for the work I needed yeah. that inspired me to get this, I needed something a bit heavier sound. Yeah. So what and is I didn't the- want to change that. Or and there's something about yes, you can boost your amp and all that, but there's still something that comes from the guitar pickups that makes it a little. Okay. That's how I, that's how I convinced myself. So how <laughs> to get it. Uh, what's that one weigh? Eight pounds, six ounces. Wow. Still for great. 57. That's another reason why I picked it up. Yeah. Also, once again, my friends, you know, like, okay, eight pounds, six ounce Murphy lab gold top at a reasonable price is if I need to sell it, I'm going to right. get that back. Right. You're good. That's my point. And I bought it used. So that's always my way. I don't ever buy them new. And I make sure there's something that I can, if I need to turn around, because how many guitars you get that you completely just take a beating on when you decide to sell it again? You're like, oh, yeah. yeah. So. I mean, so they're very different sounding, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, they both sound cool. Yeah. But uh, am, am I imagining it because you told me about the pickups or do you feel like this has some subtler dynamics yeah this one's lower output i think that's part of it i mean i'm not always sold on those pickups i might try changing them out a little bit to maybe make uh-huh. these two but then again as a, as a friend of mine say well why do you want your both les pauls to sound the same you got a great sound and heavy right. one right. and you got a great sounding like the blues les paul and that one's more like the rock and roll les paul and i'm like yeah. that's a cool way to look at it you know yeah, that's a cool way to look at yeah. it yeah. so 
Yeah, it's a little more, got more definition, more depth to the notes, I think, as it stands. Since we have a guitar player on the show, why don't you play a little something on this Les Paul and then play something, play a similar thing on the 335. Okay. Uh... Doing my best wheels of fire at the moment, you know. There you go. You uh, um, change guitars, and I'll say hi to some people. We got um, David Barber from Barber Electronics in the chat in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Direct drive, direct drive, direct drive. Old friends, yeah. That boy, you need a Marshall in a box. David's your guy. Or well, frankly, the, his dumbbell pedal, his burn unit is amazing too. I never uh, tried that one. Who else went by here? I saw somebody. Some other folks. Well, there's a lot of folks. Octave Sears. Oh, uh, Fat Philosopher Shane in, out in um, out in Japan logged on. It is very early in Japan, so it's always good when Shane can can drop in. Okay, so this is a well play, so we can get. <laughs> It was louder immediately. Yeah, and there's a mid quack or yeah. mid thing that that like three thirty five pushing through there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the three thirty five yeah. have that. Yeah, and these are the stock pickups. I like the way it works in this guitar. You know, go the neck. Um... You know. Yeah. And I just love, you know. Getting a lot of, you're getting a lot of love for the 335 uh, compared. So, uh, and, and we had a request. I, 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 yeah, I love the 335. Yeah, so they're they're they're, they're requesting specific cream tunes, which would uh, demonetize. Which, would ding us, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a huge Clapton fan from that period. Like right. one of the, my biggest influences. And if there's any sort of person who I could maybe mimic fairly well, I think, and it's it's him at that period, because I'm just I'm just so enamored with it. Um, so, uh, but you know, like this is a new acquisition. I looked for a 335 for a long time. And I never found one I really liked. And I, I found this one and it really spoke to me. And I think it's a really great sounding guitar. Um, you know, so. Yeah, it's really, it's really great. Yeah. Um, uh, Eric Warrington is asking, what, no SGLPs? No uh, 61, 62, or 63s? Uh, well, we don't, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. No, go ahead. I, I had one. I had yeah. one recently. So I uh, a, a, an SG. And... Um, I really, really like SGs a lot. I'm, I might have my, I have the, the, my radar out for someone at some point. I don't have, I can't afford one at the moment, but um, I just got the radar out, you know, and then like something like that gold top, you're like, well, you know, if, this, if the magic SG comes along, then, you know, um, yeah. So exactly. Yeah. You just, shuffle. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me, like that's the whole thing, like the great thing about, you know, a Gibson, like especially it's a new guitar, like it, it's a great guitar, but it's a new guitar. So, um, I love SGs. The one I had, but it was, it was a really good sounding guitar. It just didn't um, hang with the other guitars in terms of what it is good as the other guitars. So, yeah. well, and, and, I, and as we as I went to, to great pain yesterday to say, um, not as good in your hands. I mean, everybody everybody approaches an instrument a different way. Right. You know, I I don't hit the guitar very hard at all. So a guitar that kind of comes apart for you might yeah. be perfect for me. So. And there's other really practical things too. The SGs are, are a little pretty kind of delicate as well, travel wise. Mm -hmm. I take those things. And my the SG turned around and helped me get a different strap. So I turned liquidated right. that into 
Yep. The guitar I'll play a lot more than the SG. Yeah, yeah. But I like them a uh, lot. Quick, quick unboxings said he wants a PRS SG. Uh, it, I actually started um, with PRS uh, with mm -hmm. the Mira when they were making those in the US as a core model. And I'll tell you that the core Miras um, with the wrap tail piece and actually in the in their 2010, they made them with P90s. Matter of fact, David Barber helped me find one um, and I had one already. It was, it's an amazing guitar, incredible. Yeah. And it had, and it's an all mahogany, has that bite, although they did make them with maple tops too. It has that kind of working man's, um, you know, uh, just incredible, yeah. 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 Rodan one says, I remember the mirror. Yeah. I had, I actually had a number of mirrors. Um, they were very cool. First one I bought was from 2008 when they, um, th during the hard economy time, they actually would, if you bought a guitar new from the factory, they would swap out the pickups and I had them put DGT pickups in my mirror. They would, they did that. Wow. They did that for like, I don't know, six, eight months. I mean, David, David, uh, Paul Reed Smith did amazing stuff to keep everybody employed that year. Yeah. Um, and I said to David Grissom, when I had him on the stream, that I thought that that was the reason that the 2008 and 2010s, um, are, um, are such neat guitars because people just, they just took a lot more time with them. And David chimed in and said, he thought the 2010s were the, the magic, one of the magic years, uh, yeah. at least for his model and, uh, and some others. So, yeah. So, well, that 335 is really, really nice. No, it, it's great. And I play it all the time. And what I love about it is, uh, the semi-acoustic thing on a couch too. You know, huh. and these are, um, uh, I kept the nylon saddles. I did try the steel saddles on it and I think it sounded really good, but this just had the wheels of fire clapped and thing, you know? Right. And that's why I got this. I love the, the look of the 64 with the block inlays and the smaller, the horns and the neck shape was really, it, it's, it's, it's just spot on great. You know, and, and the Murphy lab things are, yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah, yeah. they're so, if you get a good one, you know, I've played a few that were not great, but you know, what year is this one? It's this brand guitar. new. This is like a, uh. 2021 yeah it look like? yeah 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 i think yeah first number or last number yeah 21 yeah yeah the last number yeah yeah nice nice and the nylon saddles yikes i don't know they sound great they don't have they they mute things a little bit but in a really nice one eric johnson uses nylon saddles on his burst he likes it better and 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 we know this because we know people that work on his burst exactly yeah <laughs> so insider information right. Yeah. And so I, I, the only thing, the problem I have with the 335 is that if you're traveling on a plane and things like the cases are significantly larger, so big, yeah, the, you yeah. know, and that's one issue that I have with them, you know, like the, the, the Collings was fine. It was that smaller, like a 339, the kind of yeah. size that was really comfortable, but, um, flying, I had a case, a flight case for a 335 when I had an old one a while ago when I was touring, yep. uh, it was monstrously large. It was just stupid. You know, right. so that's yeah. one of the issues. So there's a lot of things that I, we talked about. That's why I lean towards fenders on the road because they're just so easy to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. David, uh, Mesham is senior Misha, maybe a uh, senior is asking what amp and pedals. He must be came a little late. Um, yeah, John already answered that you're using a fractal, but Perry wanted me to ask you, mm -hmm. I think because he watched some of your, the stream yesterday and he wondered if, um, you could quickly talk about your drive pedals that you use and, um, I, what are, I, what are pedals that you like that work for both strats and less, and your less Paul? Okay. Uh, I, I, I love, um, the Kingsley pedals, you know, they're, they are not, uh, they're, they're tube overdrive pedals. They're hand built things by uh, Simon Jarrett up in uh, British Columbia. Uh, there's the two I love is the minstrel and the harlot. And I also have this juggler, which is basically like the front end, it's like a preamp pedal front end of a, of a ODS, like a, a, a dumbbell sort of thing. Double ODS, yeah. But if we're talking about like real world, like, you know, not, those are kind of pricey and I understand the direct drive, David Barber, it's a great pedal. Like, yeah. you know, I, I don't have one up when you had yours, I, you know, I was like, oh man, this is great. I'm like another over, that's a great pedal. It's just, yeah. I'm going to, all right, I'm going to get one, Dave. I'm going to order one because every time I play, I'm like, oh, that was a great sound and pedal, you know? Right. So well, direct and drives. The, and, and David's, um, Jeff's reminding us, we did a video uh, about the Beano album. And then we did a video about Beano on a budget and, mm -hmm. uh, David, I had a direct drive. It's a, it's a Marshall, uh, pedal. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and actually there's the thing about David's pedals at this point is he packs so much, so much variety. He's got a three way mm -hmm. switches and it's like, you got all these different tones. And, uh, and one of the settings on that, uh, direct drive is so JTM 45. It, it is so, you know, um, uh, Beano album, you can just totally dial it. And you were playing, a Les Paul with the 
Barber into your brother's Princeton? 68 yeah, Princeton, yeah, right? Princeton, yeah, Reverb, yeah. No, <laughs> that's a great pedal. So I would just say like, you know, if you want to go something that's very reasonably priced for how, not right. for how it sounds, just a great sounding pedal that is reasonably priced, I would yeah. go with something like that. Um, other ones like the, um, I really like uh, the Matt Schofield pedal, the Supreme. That's a really nice sounding pedal. Yeah, I, that's on my one of my, my pedal board. I really think that that's a really good pedal. Um, there's so many. Um, for a Marshall thing, there's the the Dry Bell, the engine, which is really kind of a good Marshall thing. Huh. Um, the front of my let me borrow it. I've got one over there. But for me, it's if for and then there's I'm sorry. Um, the the Shanks Memoram Shanks. I love that pedal. But kind of a no, nobles thing, but it doesn't sound like anything like a nobles. Hmm. Uh, I'm friends with the guys, so we, you know. Um, so and that's you know. very that's very much amp sounding. That's the thing. Yeah, this is a spectacular pedal. It is it is very pricey. Yep. But um, you know, if you're gonna spend some, like this is one of those pedals that when I got it, it was yep. just great. You know, like I use right. it all the time. Um, but if you're a little bit more in a in a budget, um, without sacrificing, I think the direct drive is a perfect choice. Yeah, great. especially for that Marshall thing, which I kind of I usually always lean more towards a Marshall or I, I know Marshalls aren't like Dumbles, but to me, their overdrive in a Dumble is more Marshally in a way it reacts to me than in Fendery. I could uh -huh. be wrong, but yeah, I don't know. Sometimes when I play Fenders and you overdrive, and I feel a little different than they do when I play my two rock. But yeah, yeah. when I say Marshalls, by the way, I mean I have an old Super Lee that I've had forever. I'm talking old school Marshalls, not like a 2000 or something like that. Right. I'm talking about. JTM 45s and plexis and things. Right. Short, short, short step away from a tweed basement. Right. 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 Uh, people are starting to say thanks. Oh, David's, David's asking thanks for the thing. Uh, I want to see if we've got other questions. We're kind of running out of time. Um, Do should we pull out the PRSs now or what? We... <laughs> I think the panda left. I think he was so disappointed that we didn't go early. Uh, with the PRSs. Well, and you know, I, and David said it on, on his stream. I think David, every, every interview he gets pulled into it. And, um, he basically said, you know, if the producer can't see from the window, he's happy. He thinks he's getting the best Les Paul of his life. And it's a DGT. Um, yeah, but my DGT doesn't really sound like, um, the less, the DGT doesn't sound like a Les Paul, but they're, they're in the same camp, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and it has that next bit of articulation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it's got the little bit longer scale and all those kind of things. Yeah, there's more going on, you know. Um, sure. You know, and somebody's talking about pickup covers. Like I, you know, I know there's a thing when you have them on or off. I just think they look. I like the way they look with them on. I just kind of roll with that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, actually, That's you know, scary. the the PRS you could reach for because we have like all of one minute is the five ninety four. All right. We don't have a single cut five ninety four. We have a double cut five ninety four. Yeah. Play the little bit that you were playing on the Oh yeah. Now, these are fluences that I have and are given a whirl because um really a yeah, a friend of mine of Fishman sent them to me. Huh. Um, so I just thought I'd give them a try. Yeah, Greg Cox, a friend, he's like, oh, man, I love him, going to love him. So I, I tried them, um, trying them, um, you know, just because Cause. he sent me a pair and I thought I'd give it a shot, you know, like, and this guitar for me, like, I, it's, what's fun about it is I, I just, it was a good palette for trying different pickups. Yeah. Um, I think I may end up uh, going back to regular pickups, you know. Uh, but I think they sound good. Um, I had the, the PRS. I didn't love the standard pickups that came in as the PRSs. I thought they were a little wooly on the neck. I just like a little, it, they just didn't kill me for this mm -hmm. guitar. Um, I've got a few friends who are big PRS guys like, oh yeah, yeah. I like the whatever model pickups yeah. better. So maybe I'll cool. ask them what they put in there as a little more output. So, yeah. and then there's the Grissom. Right. <laughs> Is asking, um, if you could go through the amp and pedals, you know, really, I'm going to refer David to you recently, actually pretty recently had done a pedal board video and it's great. It's oh, thanks. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I would, I would uh, steer you there, Dave, because we're out of time today. David Barber. Um, uh, it's Dave, Dave oh. Misham Sr. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've got a, I've got a, if you go to my, my page, there's a, a pedal board thing where I'm, it always yeah. kind of changes, but it still kind of revolves around that kind of thing. Yeah. Actually, actually, I would encourage you. And I love to do this because I'll go watch rig rundowns. Like Jason Isbell has done multiple ones. Eric Johnson has done multiple ones. And, and so I'll go, you know, search Jeff Macrolane pedal board and look at any thing that Jeff has done and see how it evol evolves over time. I think mm -hmm. that's absolutely fascinating as people try different things. It's not that the other ones were bad and the new ones, newest ones are good. It's like, it's just watching somebody's journey. Yeah. Um, Cause uh, you know, we can go all seventies Eastern religion here and say, um, that's what it is, folks. It's the journey. It's not, it's not the destination of today. It's like these fluence pickups in this PRS. You just try stuff or, yeah, you know, and uh, I've been, and that's remember. Like you're fortunate enough that you've got friends at these companies. They want you to try Look, And you know, you're a YouTuber. If I'm liking them, then people, if I like, I only play stuff that I like. Yeah. I just want to say something really, really quickly about Les Pauls and things like that. Um, uh, pickups will not necessarily change the sound of your guitar. You know, you're like, I, I don't like my, my guitar. Uh, I think it sounds terrible. I'm going to change pickups. I think David said it. You think pickups just accentuate what the guitar is doing. If you know that you have a good guitar, and I think that I've run that from what it sounds like acoustically, um, pickups can make a nice difference for sure. It's a it's it's like putting a new speaker in your amp can change the sound of your amp. So before you jettison your guitar, if you really love it and there's something like it's a little too up, much output or too low, try um, a new set of pickups. And also, um, if you play the music I do and stuff really like a little more classic stuff, the 50s wiring does make a difference for me yeah. with a Les Paul, for sure. Cool. And again, I'm going to I'm going to remind everybody to go watch Jeff's dialing in a Les Paul video. Um, it's just just so much information there and I absolutely love it. And Jeff, do the plug of your uh, your, re your most recent course. Yeah, I've got a, a course out and I'm keeping the 50 percent off for this channel too. It's um, Mastering Minor Triads and my Mastering Major Triads course. And it's kind of a no nonsense approach for you learning your major and minor triads. Like it's, it's work, like, but it, you, you know, with my students all the time, you just got to do it. And this, I think I've broken it down in a fun way with examples and how to use them. So, right, right. Yeah. Uh, and I also saw Ben Fletcher, uh, who's a YouTuber from the UK that I really enjoy. And Ben actually has a 2007, this is like where I, I know my neighbor's dog's name, but I don't know their names. Um, mm -hmm. I, I remember the year of Ben's um, Les Paul, his dark burst Les Paul. is a 2007, which is a, a year where they were um, uh, uh, chambered. That's the word I'm looking for. Chambered. Oh, and those are sound great, man. Some of those yeah. are really... Yeah, like... It was like 2007, 2008, and, and he actually yeah. sought one of those out. So I'd encourage you guys go over to that channel. It's a great slide player and a great player overall. So go check him out as well. And I want to thank everybody for being here. Jeff? Thanks yeah. for being here, man. Thanks, thanks for man. Thanks for having stuff. me. You know, it's a, the great hanging two days in a row. Um, <laughs> and we've actually, the funny thing is Keith and I have actually never met in three dimensions. Never met in person. We talk all the time. I consider him one of really good friends. Yep. We've never actually met. So we're going to figure that out pretty soon because he's not really that far away from me. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> well, and especially now. So yeah. uh, easier for me to travel these days. So sure. lots more reason to do it. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to, uh, thank everybody for being here and thank again to Jeff, as we said, it was always a lot of fun. Thanks and everybody. Everybody remember the links for ish guitars are in the description and until next time, I'm going to go ahead and play the tune. I, we didn't say this. So the tune that I played kicking off was Jeff playing that 53. No, the red Les Paul. No, this is, this oh, is no old. Kidding? Yeah. That, that's no, that recording is pretty old. Yeah. And that song got reworked for the record with Robin and I, cause he really, we played it live a bunch and he really likes it. Let's do that one. I'm like, well, if you say so. So that it used, it, it's called a, uh, it's your, uh, that, and this is called, that'd be great. But then the new one is, um, uh, don't mean a thing, you know, right. but so yeah, that's on both ball. records. That's on both records, but yeah. the, so hopefully the one we're playing isn't going to ding the copyright, but no, it doesn't. I've tried it. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. Right. All right. So we're going to go there now. Thanks again, everybody. And, um, we'll see you soon. I'm working on, um, the guitars of Tony Iommi and Angus Clark uh, played the track. You should tune in just for Angus's track because oh, I've so heard good. it and so I'm waiting good. for it. And and that's where it was. I was laughing because um, we did the Angus Young one and I used Angus Clark. And then we did the Jeff Beck one and I used Jeff Macrolane. Mm -hmm. um, so I couldn't I couldn't find a guitar player named Tony for this one. So we went back to Angus. So, all right. So thanks again, everybody. And uh, as I said, I'm going to take you back to Jeff's tune uh, for two minutes as we roll out. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.